This video is sponsored by AeroPress, and if you stick around, I have a coupon for 15% off the newly launched AeroPress models. Hey, now, welcome into the mystery cabin, my friends. Morning. Another day, another rear wheel test. Today, we're doing on the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, the new top model from Samsung. And a little bit different today, I'm actually in San Jose, where we just finished Samsung Unpacked, the event where Samsung actually launched this phone. And Samsung apparently has a plan for today for the few of us that are here to kind of go explore a little bit. So, as per the usual in my videos, we're gonna go explore all while we test out this phone. It'll just be wherever Samsung is taking us today. But before we do all that, first things first. Fifth bar, because I didn't make it oh, in time for breakfast. <laughs> Coffee. Check. And welcome to the mystery spot. According to the website, it's a gravitational anomaly located in the Redwood Forest just outside of Santa Cruz, California. It goes on to tell you how you'll be stunned by the perception of the laws of physics and gravity are questioned. And it cites speculations of metallic cones buried in the earth here for spacecraft guidance systems, magma vortexes, etc. It's actually though, a piece of land bought by George Pranther in 1939, who was an electrician, mechanic, and inventor who owned a welding shop and a repair garage before becoming inspired by the popular popularity of the Oregon Vortex, which opened in 1930. Now, both of these are one of several roadside attractions that opened after the boom of automobiles and highways in the United States after World War II. After soldiers had felt they had seen a lot of the world during wartime, the idea was, why not explore America itself? Now, there isn't any weird gravity here, but instead, it's a series of optical illusions that stem from the fact that Pranther built the entire house at a 20 degree angle, and that they all result from standing on the tilted floor of viewing things next to the slanted house as well. Basically, if you're standing at a slanted angle and other things are standing at slanted angles, your brain kind of tricks you into thinking that they're level when they're actually not. Either way, makes for some great Instagram photos. I wonder if Pranther knew that back in 1930. Regardless, let's talk about all the mysterious AI features that Samsung has touted on their new Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. Samsung has been pushing their new Galaxy AI even before this launch happened, so I think we need to discuss what the actual features are that that entails because some of them are actually pretty useful. So firstly, we have Live Translate for phone calls. So basically, you select the languages that you and the other caller speak and then call that person and it initially lets them know on the other end that you are using a translator service, which is important because well, as with all translations, that flow isn't gonna be quite the same as a real conversation. Then it can translate whatever either of you say into the other person's language in text and with a voice. There's also a feature that I just discovered, which if you're like me and you hate unwarranted phone calls, you'll probably like. And that is you can tap call assistant, then text call when someone calls you, and it'll just turn whatever the person on the other end is saying into text. And then whatever I type in response gets turned into speech. So I don't actually have to talk on the phone. I kind of love it. We have live translate for messaging apps where you can tap languages to have it add text next to the original text of the messages. And it works in various messaging apps, not just the normal Samsung messages. I didn't get it to work in Telegram, but it works fine in WhatsApp, for example. The only downside to this is that you're forced to use the Samsung keyboard for these to work, which I'm not happy about myself. And I'm sure others out there prefer other keyboards as well, but what can you do? Also, while using the Samsung keyboard, you can use a Grammarly-like feature to scan your message before you send it for spelling and grammar mistakes, and then just tap insert to swap it out. Then in the voice recording app, we have a transcript assist feature, which brings Google voice recorder features to Samsung devices finally. So similar to that app on Pixel devices, you can record lectures or interviews, etc., and it'll automatically transcribe everything into text after. This has always been an amazing feature for Pixel phones, honestly, and it allows you to search through those recordings as well to get to the parts 
that you need. It'll also try and identify different speakers by their voice and label those as well. You can translate any of it into different languages easily, and it can also automatically create a summary of the entire recording using the audio to figure out key points. Similarly, the Samsung Notes app now also has the ability to summarize your notes from what is written. And now you can also use the S Pen to write to text in any text field, which you could do to some degree before, but it now actually works as fast as I can write. And even if my handwriting isn't amazing, which it isn't. Now something Google came up on stage to talk about at length was this new circle to search feature. This essentially allows you to long press on the home button or gesture indicator if you're like me and you prefer the gestures to button navigation and it'll freeze whatever's on the screen, including videos. And you can either circle, tap, or scribble on things to then search the web for that thing. Now it's basically a new way of using Google Lens, which you used to do from a specific Google app, for example, but one, it actually works much faster than I expected. And two, you can do it without leaving whatever you're doing. So it just makes for a much better experience, frankly. Okay, and all these Galaxy Eye features are actually quite useful. And again, I was pleasantly surprised as how fast they are. But there are a few that are a little less useful that also mimic some other Pixel features. Like Chat Assist with the Samsung keyboard to change the way that you're talking to sound more polite or other options, including social, complete with cringy hashtags, etc. And then there's wallpaper generation that forces you to fill in gaps. I'm sure this is to stop people from doing less than PG things with this feature. And that's fun to be able to do, but it's just probably not that useful for most people, if we're honest. Now, something interesting about all of this is the fact that the correlations that I keep making between these features and the Google Pixel devices are actually very connected. You see, Samsung is now the first mobile partner to use Google's recently announced Gemini AI models on these devices. I might do a full Decoder episode, my explainer series here on the channel on what all of that actually means. If you guys want me to, let me know in the comments below. But suffice it to say that it's these models, which are similar to what Pixel devices use, that Samsung is using to create these features. The thing is that these models will be available by Google to other mobile partners at some point, but it is up to them, just like it is up to Samsung, to use them and actually create features like these out of them. And for now, it's probably safe to assume that Samsung is the initial and exclusive partner, at least for a little while. By the way, are you curious how I made my coffee in my hotel room this morning? Well, that brings us to today's sponsor. And it's a coffee sponsor. How perfect is that? This is the AeroPress Clear, and it uses three-in-one brewing tech, immersion, aeration, and pressure to produce the least bitter flavors for your coffee possible. The huge benefit to me personally is the fact that it's portable and it's easy to bring with me on the many flights I do, as you guys know. And the AeroPress, it's tiny paper filters and this mini hand grinder don't take up too much room in my bag. I can also use the electric kettle that's in most hotel rooms these days and just find some local spot for beans like these from a San Jose roastery and cafe just down the road from my hotel. To brew the coffee, you simply put the filter in the bottom of the AeroPress, grind your beans, put the grinds inside, add hot water, stir for 10 seconds, put on the plunger, let that sit for 30 seconds, and then push down gently until the coffee is in your cup. It's so much better than crappy hotel coffee machines. Now, AeroPress is pretty famous at this point in the coffee world, honestly. They have thousands of five-star reviews across 60 different countries. But if you just learned about them from this video, you can check them out at the link in the description below, along with my coupon code listed there to get 15% off. heard of the redwood trees in California. These giant old growth redwood trees are in a 40 acre grove here in the Santa Cruz mountains called the Henry Cowell Redwood State Park. And we're currently chugging along through them on a 1941 Plymouth diesel train from a company called Roaring Camp, which runs these trains through various scenic routes here. And even have a collection of 1890 steam engines that are among the oldest and most well-preserved narrow gauge steam engines providing regular passenger service in the US. Now, this is my first time seeing these trees in person, honestly, and they are impressive. And you can understand why these trees inspired some of the first nature preservation efforts in California. Some of the oldest trees here in this grove range in size up to 300 feet or 91 meters and over 16 feet or 4.9 meters in diameter and are approximately between 
1400 and 1800 years old. And this seems like a good place to test out the cameras. First, we have a similar to last year, 12 megapixel F 2.2 aperture ultra wide camera. That's a one by 2.5 inch sensor with 1.12 micron sized pixels. Then we have our similar to last year as well, main 200 megapixel F 1.7 aperture, one by 1.33 inch sensor with 0.6 micron sized pixels that are binned in sets of 16 by default to get a 12.5 megapixel image with 2.4 micron sized pixels. Now, the larger the pixel size, the more light they can gather and the better light performance they have in theory, which we'll test out more later. The nice thing about the amount of pixels here for the main sensor though, is that like other phones that we've now seen, Samsung can crop the sensor to get a pretty lossless 2X zoom, which is nice. And only has the real downside of not being as good as a larger dedicated 2X in low light because the pixels are smaller. But it's a good trade-off overall and seems to be the way companies are going regardless. I'd rather personally have a further dedicated sensor and this cropped 2X myself. Speaking of that, we have our same three times optical sensor from the S23 Ultra. That is a 10 megapixel F 2.4 aperture, one by 3.6 inch sensor. And our one new camera here is a 50 megapixel five times camera with an F 3.4 aperture and a one by 2.52 inch size sensor or so based on calculations. This is now replaced Replacing the 10 times zoom from the S23 Ultra, and they are now able to also crop out the center of the sensor like we do with the main sensor to get a pretty good 10 times zoom thanks to the larger number of pixels. And frankly, this is probably the better move as Samsung themselves have said that their own data shows that a 5X region is where a lot of people use their camera way more so than 10X. And as you can tell from the photos, at least in good lighting so far, the 10X is pretty solid still, while the 5X has also improved. And beyond that, we have a similar 12 megapixel F 2.2 aperture camera like we did from last year's phone on the front as well. Now, of course, as we've learned, the hardware on all of these phones is only one part of the equation of the camera taking good photos. It's the software editing the photo as you take it is another major factor. And for this year, Samsung has apparently done a lot of changes to the photo processing, and you can definitely see it in side-by-sides with the S23 Ultra. As usual, I'll let you guys be the judge of those and against the other phones that I've brought along throughout this video. We also have some AI features for the cameras as well, and yes, some of those also mimic the pixel features that we've seen before. We have a generative edit, Samsung calls it, to remove items, move things in the image, or add more to the background of a photo, similar to Magic Eraser, Magic Editor on the Pixel, and Generative Expand in Photoshop, respectively. All of which are surprisingly fast and work a lot better than I expected, actually. And the S Pen makes it easier to be precise with as well, which is a nice benefit here, too. We also have Instant Slow-Mo, which allows you to turn any video into slow-mo by adding frames in to get it to be as if it was shot in 120 FPS and then slowed down, which is a cool concept, actually. Since you don't have to decide to shoot slow-mo and don't need to shoot 120 FPS, PS all the time, just in anticipation of maybe slowing the footage down later, which by the way, this S24 Ultra can actually do as well in the pro video mode. So you can do that too, which is great. We also have some other suggested AI edits like removing reflections when it recognizes them or also shadows across someone's face instantly. They're actually pretty useful and they seem to work well for the most part. Samsung also says that night mode photos or nightography as Samsung likes to call it have also been improved and will Test that out after the sun goes down. Downtown San Jose near a hotel for the event is a bar called Minibus. It actually reminds me of a bar near my apartment in New York City called Barcade. But basically it's a bar with games in it and I can't think of a better place for this room full of tech nerds to get a drink after the event. In here, we have over 30 vintage arcade cabinets with games like Mortal Kombat, Ninja Turtles, Street Fighter 2, and many more. Plus. 12 fully functioning pinball machines, and some newer games like four player Pac-Man, which I always enjoy playing and smack talking to my friends with. They also have pan pizza and other bar food, as well as local San Jose artists art specifically made to fit their theme throughout. Okay, and while we're here testing out the low light of the cameras on the S24 Ultra, let's talk about a few other important changes. And firstly, Apple just did it, so Samsung 
is doing it. We have a new titanium frame around the S24 Ultra, which regardless of who did what first, is welcome. As just like with the iPhone Pro models that have it, it makes the device feel lighter and is a stronger metal than aluminum. The S24 Ultra is also thinner and shorter by a tad than the S23 Ultra and a hair wider as well. And that's mostly because of thinner bezels, as well as a now flatter screen, which I know so many people will be so happy about. And I have to admit, it makes the phone feel more unique in your hand, as well as helps with using the S Pen up to the edges more. Honestly, I like the way it feels. It also now has a new Corning Gorilla Glass armor that it's called on the front and back, which are supposedly four times stronger, more scratch resistant, but also 75% less reflective, which is nice when looking at the screen, especially outside in the sun. Now, speaking of the screen, it's the same 6.8 inch QHD plus 120 Hertz adaptive refresh display. So it can go up to 120 Hertz for smoother animations and down to one Hertz to save power based on what's on the screen. But now it also has a peak brightness of 2600 nits, which helps with visibility outdoors, I'm sure. We also have a 5,000 milliamp battery, just like last year, but supposedly the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy chipset that's in here should help with battery life to some degree. But speaking of, the battery did die around 7 p.m. And here is my battery usage and my screen on time for anyone who's curious about that for today. Keep in mind though, it's a real world test day and it's not a normal day. So I use the camera a lot more than you ever would. But here is another day that was much more normal. And so you have something to compare it to. Now, something important that got cheers from the audience during the presentations is the fact that Samsung has announced seven generations of OS upgrades for the entire S24 lineup, as well as seven years of security upgrades, which is always welcome. And it can help you justify a purchase knowing that it'll be supported for quite a long time at least. Speaking of buying the phone, it comes in 256 gig, 512 and one terabyte options with pricing starting at $1299 for the 256 gig version. But right now, if you pre-order, you can get an upgrade to 512 gigs for that same price. I'll, as always, leave the best prices and deals that I can find the S24 Ultra in the links below. But there you go, guys. Let me know what you think about the phone and my weird little format in the comments below. Always appreciate hearing from you guys. Subscribe and ding the bell if you're not already. And thanks to AeroPress for sponsoring this video. So excited for a coffee sponsor in these videos. I'm not gonna lie. So please check them out for a discount if you're interested again at the link below. And it's been a long day. And so I'm gonna go back to getting my butt kicked at video games. Good night. Children. Children. Ugh. Of the software that does. But there you go, guys. Let me know what you think about the phone and my. Yep. <laughs> uh.